Ah, uh, the age-old question. PC gaming or console gaming? You can have not heard of this debate. Usually, it has to do with which one is better. But for all the arguments vehement fans have made over the years to arrive at a conclusive and definitive answer, there simply isn't one. Yes, they're both used for gaming, but their approach is very different. And since neither is without fault or merit, today we'll be taking a look at what exactly sets them apart. Only then can you decide which one is better suited for your gaming needs. But before we do any of that, we need to establish what exactly we mean when we say PCs and consoles. We'll start with the PCs. Technically, there are three operating systems that a desktop computer can run on. Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. But for the purposes of this discussion, we'll be referring to the Windows whenever we say PC. It's by far the most popular of the three when it comes to gaming. And while plenty of games do get Linux and Mac OS releases nowadays, this selection of games is still much too limited for us to include them in this debate. Another distinction within this category can be made between desktop and laptop computers. We won't be taking laptops into account here. They are by default not only more expensive than desktop computers, but they also lag behind it performance-wise. Which isn't to say that there's anything wrong with gaming on a laptop. It's just that gaming wasn't a primary concern in the development, and it shows. Now when it comes to consoles, we have a much greater variety to choose from. We have the mainstream consoles, these are your Playstations and your Xboxes, and they're the most popular and they offer a vast library of games to choose from. This also includes the Playstation Vita, which was released as a standalone handheld, but then transitioned into somewhat of a companion to the PS4. But then there are what some might call casual consoles. These aim to offer more family-friendly entertainment and rely on creativity and controls rather than the sheer power of their hardware. In case you didn't know, Nintendo is the king of casual consoles. Their Wii and DS have both sold over 100 million units, and it looks like they're aiming to topple these figures with the Switch and the 3DS. For the purposes of this video, we won't be referring to the casual consoles when we talk about consoles. Game-wise, there's nothing quite like what they offer on the PC, so if that's your cup of tea, then look no further. Mainstream consoles, on the other hand, share most of their games with the PC, so we'll be referring to them when we say consoles. This may have been a lengthy introduction, but we needed to make sure we we're all on the same page. Now with that out of the way, we can finally get down to business. Consoles have the PC beat in the price department hands down. The Xbox currently stands at a measly $200, no more expensive than Sony's and Nintendo's handhelds, the PlayStation Vita and the Nintendo 3DS. The PlayStation 4 costs $300, just like the Nintendo Switch. The most expensive consoles are the PS4 Pro at $400 and the Xbox One X, which costs $500. And keep in mind, these last two are revisited versions of the existing consoles made specifically for 4K gaming. You'd need at least twice that much cash to consider gaming on 4K on the PC. And in addition to them being cheap, they're also very cost-effective in the long run. With proper care, a console can last you over 5 years, until the next generation comes along. What's more, you won't ever have to worry about compatibility issues or your hardware getting outdated. And we mention these problems in particular because they're relevant when it comes to PC gaming. This is because there is no set standard for PC. Sure, every computer needs to have a processor, graphics card, RAM memory, storage, and a compatible motherboard, but you're still left with great freedom to pick and choose between many options for these parts. Which is why we can divide gaming PCs into four categories. Budget PCs, that cost around the same as the cheapest consoles, but are bound to get outdated very quickly. Entry-level PCs, which offer a slight performance improvement, but are still far from future-proof. Mid-range PCs, that offer excellent Full HD performance and can take 2K resolutions. These cost anywhere between $500 and $800 and will have a good few years of relevance in them. And finally, high-end PCs. These can cost well over $2,000, and the most powerful of these can flawlessly run games in native 4K. Their components are also more likely to die of old age than become obsolete. What's great about the PC is that you're free to upgrade it as you see fit. 
but this doesn't come without a downside. Because of the numerous replaceable components, troubleshooting can be quite a hassle, whereas it's pretty straightforward to do so on consoles. And one of the things often overlooked when looking at PC prices is that these prices don't account for the peripherals you need to buy. Everything from the monitor to the mouse, the keyboard and the headset to potentially the speakers and some others. You'd be surprised how much of all of these can raise the actual price you'll need to pay for your PC to be fully functional and not just a powerful collection of hardware sitting in a box. Now when it comes to games, there are actually a few things that we need to take into consideration. Selection, acquisition, and compatibility. Selection is pretty straightforward. First we need to get exclusives out of the way. Both PC and consoles have them, and there's nothing you can do about that. Want to play Bloodborne? Get a PS4. End of discussion. But even games that aren't developed exclusively for a console don't arrive on all platforms at the same time. Most games are developed for consoles first and only ported to PC later. That can mean months later, or even years later. The only thing PC gaming has going for it in this category is its indie scene. On consoles, you have only two ways to get games. You can either download them from the console's network, PSN and Xbox Live, or you can buy retail physical copies. Alternatively, you could get physical copies secondhand at a lower price, but that's it. Whereas if you're a PC gamer, you have a plethora of options. You can get physical copies, you can get them on online platforms like Steam and Origin, you can get them on many other sites that sell games online, like Humble Bundle, and even the great markets like the G2A and the Kingwin are available to you. Compatibility is for many the biggest issue to deal with in gaming. Like we said, console games will always work flawlessly on the consoles they were developed for, whether they came out of its infancy or in its winter years. The same cannot be said for games on PC. Because of the sheer amount of hardware available, you might encounter problems running certain games. And we have to keep in mind that not all ported games are optimized well, meaning that a game you should absolutely be able to play without any problems may bug out and lag. However, where PC gaming excels is backwards compatibility. You will very rarely, if ever, not be able to play an old game on PC. It may need some tweaking to get it jump started, but in most cases it should work. Whereas you cannot play previous gen PlayStation games on the PS4, for example. Sony might do something to rectify this in the future, but as of right now, all we can do is speculate. We have to know that the Xbox One doesn't have this problem, but this still isn't a guarantee that you will be able to play current gen games in next generation consoles. And with that, we've covered all the major points regarding to the PC versus console gaming debate. Like we've said, we can't point to either of these as the clearly superior one as they're so different, but hopefully this helps shed some light on what doubts you may have had. So tell us what you think in the comments below, or better yet, if we've helped you make your decision. If so, and you decided to go with the console gaming, then make sure to check out our PS4 Pro vs Xbox One X video to see which one of these consoles is better suited for you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.